Hi, are you in the wheelchair? Oh, uh, hello. I'm Laura. What's your name? Oh, it's Bernadette. Oh, that's a nice name. How did... Do I know you? Who is she, Dr. Ember? Someone new? Is this a new person, Doc? Who is she? Why are her eyes closed? Why are your eyes closed, Bernadette? Because you can't open them because there's nail polish in them. Ah, oh, weird. Nice. How did you know that? Oh, she's very new. This is going to be fun. Laura, have you taken your medicine? Definitely have not. Nurse, could you please escort Laura back to her bed and ensure she's up to date on her pills? Of course. Let's go, Laura. Fine, party poopers. See you later, Bernadette. Oh, well, I mean, I'll see you. You won't see me, will ya? <laughs> Right. Uh, sorry, I... Doctor? Yes, I'm here. Uh, sorry, but what's going on? Where am I? You said the... the what unit? This is a department of the hospital specifically designed to treat people with cases like yours. Un- unusual cases. Unlikely incidents that appear to have, shall we say, peculiar symptoms. Oh, I didn't know there was such a place. We like to stay under the radar. It's best that way. We have some patients that mainstream medicine in the world at large are um, not quite ready for. Okay. I know this can be quite shocking. Let me introduce you to some of our patients. That should give you a sense of what sort of thing we deal with here in the Absurdity Unit. We've just met Laura. She chewed on radioactive gum and now she has the ability to say things that turn out to be true. But we're just coming up to Mary. How are you feeling, Mary? I cannot complain. Thank you, Dr. Ember. And who might this be? Bernadette here is new to the ward. Pleasure to meet you. You too. Hello. I suppose you'll be wanting to know why I'm in here. Yes, I suppose so, if you like. So, my art studies teacher, Mr Peters, sits me next to Ethan Jutt with the hopeless idea that I might be a good influence on him. Mr Peters is a retired policeman and he has a scar across his forehead, which he is really sensitive about. One boy got suspended last year for pointing at it and saying, that scar on Mr Peters' face makes me feel oddly queasy. That was James. I think he had haemophobia. That's not homophobia. Sounds like it, but it's not. Anyway, we were in class and Ethan Jutt was painting something really graphic, trying to make James sick, who wasn't suspended anymore. And because I sat next to him, Ethan Jutt's paintbrush he was waving around smacked me in the face and I had a big line of red paint on my forehead. Mr. Peters saw me and thought I was mocking him and got so mad he grabbed Ethan Jutt's stapler gun and fired three rounds straight into my brain. They say his combat training kicked in or something. Whoa. Oh yeah, and in class, Ethan Jutt is always licking staples, one by one. It's just a thing he does. I complained, but apparently it's a sensory information problem and licking the staples helps him not go bananas. So apparently the staples had his germs on them and them being fired directly into my brain has given me the ability to smell pain. To, sorry, what? You can smell pain? I can smell your eyes are stinging. The left one a bit more than the right. Whoa. We'd better keep moving on. Thank you, Mary. Nice to meet you. Bye. Over here we have Harry, who was burning an ant with a magnifying glass during the solar flare. Evening. I think you need to be able to see to appreciate what's going on in Harry. Let's see. And here we have Laramie. He was up a tree when the council came to cut it down with a chainsaw that had some old rainwater mixed in with the fuel and the rhythm of the saw reverberated fish brain control messages into his head. Essentially, it appears Laramie can speak to fish. Oh, wow. Um... I'm trying to say hello. I can still speak English, asshole. And you just said you love cat farts. Oh. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Ah, and here's Lucas, an interesting case. Lucas came in with a bat. Hey, you don't have to... You have to go over it again every time, Doc. It's nothing to be ashamed of, Lucas. Yours is one of the most natural cases in here. But don't feel natural. Well, for Bernadette's sake, I'll just say it's related to an electrical object, which... I'll just get it out. I'm constipated, OK? I'm constipated. And it's because I've got a few batteries stuck in my... in me. A few? Well, four, if you must know. Okay. Are you still seeing strange images, Bernadette? Yeah, all sorts. When I look at you, I can see a flower. What kind of flower? A red one, like a rose. Oh, this is very good. Well done, Bernadette. Okay, I'm going to leave you just here by Lucas for a minute. I'll go and grab some instruments to take a look at your eyes. Okay. Welcome to the madhouse. It's amazing. It's messed up is what it is. Listen, don't. 
trust any of them. They are operating off a small grey area between compulsory hospitalisation and informed consent. They treat us like weirdos and use us for their own benefit, and then spit us out and leave us with no memory of this place, so we can't even complain. No memory? They don't want anyone knowing about this place, because it's unethical. But this is unbelievable. This changes everything. The things that that other guy can talk to fish. You're like superheroes. <laughs> Not me. Not Battery, but Lucas. Huh? Yeah, okay. That, I'm not telling you anything more about when we just met just now. Thank you very much. What's your special power, though? Nothing. They've done scans that look weird, so they think something interesting might happen. But nah, I reckon there ain't nothing useful about this shit. Or lack thereof. Seems like they're just gonna keep me in here, trying to get me to do something useful, to solve one of their bloody mysteries, which I'm no good at. Which I've got no reason to be any good at. You solve mysteries? Yeah. Well, we try to. Weird stuff happens in this hospital. They use us weirdos to get to the bottom of it. That's freaking amazing! Not really. You're like super detectives. This is like a dream. I've got a life out there, you know. In the real world. Well, I don't. What are we discussing here? Oh. Just the things I'm missing out on as I sit in this prison, getting older and older. You know we cannot let you go until you are healed. Sure. You're not that old. Wait. Your eyes are open. Oh, yeah. How long have they been open? They've just kind of loosened up. It's blurry, but I can make out just a little. You can see? Yeah, a bit, yeah. How many fingers? Two. Anything strange in your vision? It's just kind of fuzzy. Okay, let's get her out of here. Nurse! What? Congratulations. We do not keep anyone who does not need to be here. You, by the looks of it, are going to be perfectly fine. Nurse! No, I want to stay. You may not. Nurse! Enjoy your freedom. Remember us prisoners, eh? Please! While you can. Nurse, please bring me a discharge syringe. A one-hour dose will do. Righto. No, don't give me that. Don't worry. This is just to help you fight the infection. What infection? Here you go. No! Ah! The nurse will wheel you out now. Thank you! You're not getting rid of me! I want to stay! Hey! Oh, off already, are you? No, please! Oh, bye, newbie. Don't take me out! Lovely to meet you! I'm coming back! Sure you are. Sure you are. Coming back! That's the spirit. Alright, just this way. I have to. I must. Must remember. Must remember. Must remember. Absurdity Unit is created by Thomas Medina, produced with Joseph Baronio. Music by Thomas Feel, starring Coco Lawton, Philippa Johnston Leake, Penny Frost, Robert McDonough, Danica Jenner, Johanna Hayes, Kate Wyville, Nathaniel Kelly, Joseph Baronio, Jack McMillan, Sean Guy, and Max Conahan. Find out more at absurdity.pinecast.co.